Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at the distance formula and the midpoint formula. Uh, in most cases, you're going to be given two points and then asked to either find the distance between those two points or to find the midpoint of those two points. All right, um, for demonstration purposes, here's a little line segment. All right, this first endpoint could be represented as my first point, and it would have subscripts x sub 1, y sub 1 for the coordinates of that point. All right, and my second endpoint then would have the subscripts x sub 2, y sub 2. All right, that is where the x sub 1 and y sub 2s and stuff are coming from in these formulas. All right, so over here for the distance formula, the distance formula is arrived at by taking the square root of the difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y's squared. All right, now if I'm going to do this usually um, to make sure that you don't get confused, just label your two points. All right, this is the first point that they've given you, and then that makes this x sub 1 and this is y sub 1. All right, this is the second point that they have given you, so this is x sub 2, and this is y sub 2. All right, that makes plugging the numbers into the formula a little bit easier. All right, so for my distance formula then, I'm going to follow the formula up here. This says x sub 2 minus x sub 1. x sub 2 is 6 minus x sub 1 is a negative 2, and then quantity squared plus now I take y sub 2 minus y sub 1 and square it, so y sub 2 is a negative 3 minus y sub 1, which is a 5, and then quantity squared. So that first step is no more than just doing a direct substitution of my values. All right, now depending on how you deal with your integers, I usually look at this as a plus plus. This one over here turns into a plus minus. All right, so I'm going to have 6 plus 2 is going to give me an 8, so I'll have 8 squared. Negative 3 plus a negative 5 gives me a negative 8. Quantity squared. And each step, I still have the square root over it. All right. 8 squared is going to be 64. Negative 8 squared is also 64. I have a radical under that. Now I'm going to add on my last step, square root of 128. All right. Now, depending on what the directions say for the, a particular problem, you might need to simplify that radical. All right, or if you're using a calculator, you could put it into the calculator and take it out two decimal places. Okay, but the distance between those two points is square root of 128. All right, now for this example over here, I'm going to do the midpoint formula. Again, probably what I would do is I would label everything. This is the first point that they've given me. So this is x sub 1, and this would be y sub 1. This is the second point. So this is x sub 2, and this is y sub 2. Uh, doing that is just going to make it plugging into the formula a little bit easier. All right, now again, when I find the midpoint, it will be a point on that segment. So it'll have a set of parentheses with a comma in between it. I'm supposed to add up my x's and divide by 2. So negative 1 plus a 5 divided by 2, and that's going to be my x coordinate of my ordered pair. A little comma there. Now I'm going to add up my y's. So 4 plus 8 divided by 2. That's going to give me my y coordinate. All right, so this is going to be a 4 over 2, and this is going to be a 12 over 2, and I can keep simplifying down. These turned out to be whole numbers. They do not always have to be whole numbers. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2, or 12 divided by 2 is 6. All right, so the midpoint in between those two points would be the point 2, 6. And like I said, this does not have to be whole numbers. You could have 6 and a half. All right, so it really doesn't have to be whole numbers. This example just came out that way. All right, so a nice little quick review of distance formula and midpoint formula.